Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is John Hammond and welcome back to another Python programming tutorial. This is the last video in the series on URL lib. We're going to wrap it up with some of the utility functions. And you might be asking me, John, what the heck? We were looking at the utility functions in the last video. Well, yeah, but this time around we're actually going to write them on our own. We're going to create our own small, really, really simple module that just allows us to interface with these the way we write them. Obviously, you should never use those, like, in that way. You should always be using the functions from the library, but I want to prove to you that we can build them really, really easily. It's just some simple string manipulation, and let's do it. Let's dive right in. Okay, so I'm going to get into idle, and I will import URL lib, and the functions that we're going to be working with are quote, quote plus, unquote, unquote plus, and URL encode. So the example that they were showing earlier takes just simple strings and it encodes them with the URL percent sign encoded values. So I'm kind of curious, how does it all work? What does it do to everything? What, what will it literally do to everything? What if we gave it everything to work with? If we imported the string and we tried to feed it all the printable characters, string dot printable in this case, what's it doing? Numbers are still intact, letters are still intact, Okay, some of these are not working, but what, okay, what is string.printable actually display? Numbers, letters, and then punctuation characters, that's what's being encoded. We can see the hyphen, the period, and even the forward slash is still there because of the safe argument, right? The default parameter. And, okay, the underscore is still there. But all the white space characters, like space and tab and new line, those are being encoded. And that's exactly what the documentation tells us should happen. Letters, digits, and these characters, underscore, period, and hyphen, are never quoted. So that would mean that the punctuation and the white space characters are the ones that are encoded. So if we were to set up a variable called unquoted, we want it to have everything that would be unquoted if we passed it to the quote function. So string.punctuation, we know that punctuation is going to get hit. Let's actually take out the uh, hyphen and the period, though, and the underscore, because those aren't treated in the URL libs version of the function. And we want string.whitespace in there, too, right? So this is everything that would be quoted. So let's call that quoted right there. And let's try it. If we were to run URL lib, if I could actually type, quote, with quoted, we get everything, including our forward slash, but we actually want the forward slash to be encoded. So safe can equal nothing. And now we've got the entire thing. Okay. So it would actually make more sense for this quoted string to be called unquoted, right? Because that's before it's been quoted. And then quoted will actually be everything in here, in that string. But that's a string, so we can't really tell where one thing starts and ends. We want that to be inside of a list. Let's do that with some list comprehension, right? So let's say x for, actually we want to encode it because let's let's loop through everything in unquoted and we'll say URL lib dot quote with safe being turned off remember oh should spell quoted right my bad and that's everything in there awesome that's just what we wanted it's interesting you can actually do this kind of by hand without using your lib module. If you notice, all of these percent signs, all these percent encoded variables are just, if we take ORD, if we take an integer of this exclamation point, 33, and then we can convert that to hex, we've got 0, 21. If we actually look for in our, let's call this actually, before I, before I do that, let's call this variable quoted. If we actually look for the index of that exclamation point in our unquoted segment, it's zero. 
So if we look for it in our quoted one, index zero, it's 21. And you notice that's the exact same thing when we hex the ASCII value of that exclamation point. So all we would really have to do to build all of these strings is to say hex, uh, I want to say, what is it? Add the percent sign to it for one thing and take off that 0x that represents hex to, to the end. And just we get that percent 21. So if we did this with our quoted list comprehension, we could run percent sign plus hex ord x to the end. Now quoted is the exact same thing as it was before. Well, kind of. Notice that everything that includes letters is lowercase, and even things that don't have zeros when they did before, now they're just plain old letters. We can still fix this though. We can say Z fill to get it to two, so we have those zeros in there. So now it's zero A, zero B, zero C, like just like it was when we used URL lib to quote to get all this. And we can of course just bring these to uppercase with dot upper. All in a single line with some list comprehension we have that entire quoted array. Sweet! And we can do the same thing with URL lib quote if we want to do that. So now we've got two variables. We've got unquoted and quoted. And all of these indexes correspond. This exclamation point when it's unquoted will respond to this quoted percent sign 21, etc, 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 all the way through. So let's create a script that will allow us to work with these. Very, very simply. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to fire up Sublime Text, which is my editor of choice right now. And I'm going to go ahead and save this as myquoter.python in my home directory. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the two variables that we have here, quoted and unquoted. Quoted, and be this, and... Okay, that should be unquoted, my bad. And quoted will be this one here. Okay, now they're all in our in our script. Now let's define a function that can handle these. And I'm going to make this a function that actually is going to be the backbone for quote and unquote and all the other ones. So it's going to be a generic kind of all-purpose function that I'm just going to call handle. So it's going to take a string, of course, to work with. And since we're going to use it to go from unquoted to quoted and quoted to unquoted, etc., etc., we never know what's going to become what. So... I'm just going to make this really simple with some variables. This becomes that. And then we need our safe keyword in case we are processing anything with safe. Okay, cool. So, general purpose stuff. What we'll do is we'll actually loop through everything that we're working with. We'll loop through this. That could be either quoted or unquoted depending on the circumstance, but since they're the same length, it doesn't really matter. But speaking of length, we're going to loop through this with an index. We're going to go with numbers. So we have to use the length. But I don't actually want to go ahead and uh, s calculate that every time we go through the for loop. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new variable for that. Okay. So for i in range of length of this, we'll say that the term, or what we're currently looking at, can be this i. And we'll test if term in safe, if it is, and we'll continue, we don't care about it. If not, if the term is actually in the string, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and replace it. String dot, well, actually, the string will be set equal to it because string dot replace will actually return a new value rather than modify the string in place. Strings are immutable in Python. So string dot replace this whatever we're currently looking at, in this case, this you could just use the term here, just, just as the same, the current index of what we found, whether or not it be quoted or unquoted, whatever we have to change, general purpose function, remember, term with what it will become. This becomes that with the same index, so it'll correspond to whatever it is that we're looking at. Easy enough, right? So now we'll just go ahead and break out of this for loop and return the string now that it's been modified. And we're all done. We're all done with that general purpose function. 
let's go ahead and create quote. It should be really, really easy, right? All it takes is string and the safe, which defaults to a forward slash in this one, and we'll return handle. We're just calling that backend function with the string that we're working with, and the unquoted stuff will become the quoted stuff. That's the way that quote works. And of course, we'll pass in safe. Let's try it. Let's try and print out quote with the example that they're typically giving us quote Connolly in the documentation. And boom, we've got the 7% E with the forward slashes working just fine. Heck yeah. What if we did this with quote plus? What would be different about this? Well, safe is going to be nothing, remember. And we actually don't even need to call it in this case since is quote plus underscore plus. Let's check the documentation. Does that actually include? Yeah, it does include safe, but it does not have a default value. So we'll just leave it as an empty string. And the way that this is going to work for us, take a look. Let's actually run, let's, let's run the function, quote plus. If we pass in something that has a space in it, you'll notice, okay, our strings are, the forward slashes are being converted, but also our spaces become percent 20. So if we just want to get rid of those, we'll keep on with our run, with our one liner and convert them to plus signs. Quote plus, done. Let's check out how these compare to actually our URL lib uh, original, right? Print URL lib dot quote plus. The same string. The functions work the exact same way. We can do the same thing with quote. And they work the exact same way. We can pass in safe to be nothing. Safe to be nothing, because by default, remember, it's that forward slash. And, oh, I actually pasted. My bad. So safe, again, works just fine. Just fine. So now you're probably wondering, how are we going to get unquote done? Well, keep in mind that's real easy. Because we have this general purpose function, all we have to do is switch quoted and unquoted around. Remember that quote, unquote, and unquote plus did not have the safe argument, though. If you check the documentation, unquote and unquote plus did not have the, the function there. Let's try that. Print unquote plus. Uh, actually, let's pass it quote plus first. So I can just write in normal text. John Hammond. Now when we run this, global name safe is not defined. Why? Okay, yeah. Take out the safe keyword because we're not using it in those, in those parameters anymore for those functions. So that works just fine. Oh, it's actually replacing with that space. That needs to be replaced with a plus sign replaced to a space in this case, right? If we do the exact same thing with the URL lib module, we get the exact same result. Freak, heck yeah, isn't that awesome? Really simple stuff too, right? It's just like one functions being wrapped around this actual core function that we made pretty general purpose. Now let's move on to the big one. Let's move on to URL encode. That's going to take a uh, query, is how they cover it in the documentation. It converts a mapping object or a sequence of two element tuples to a percent encoded string suitable to pass the URL open, etc, etc, etc. So it takes like a dictionary or anything we can work with, right? Well, yeah, right? Let's actually print out the query items. And then let's say data can equal, just like we've had before, name. It'd be my name, John Hammond. Age, be 18. And oh, I want to say, what is it? What else do I want to say? Oh, yeah, directory. Be home. John. URL lib, if we URL encode, pass in data. Oh, what's the matter? Oh, I forgot a colon there. My bad. 
if we print out what URL it would typically give us, it's all this. So this is our goal, right? But if we print out what we have so far, URL encode, it gets each item of all of these. Okay. So let's do some more list comprehension. Let's do some cool stuff with it. Let's say x for both the key and the value in what we're actually going through in our in our data, in our dictionary, right? Because remember, it has to be returned if key equals value pairs. So we can just say for x in query dot items, we automatically have each one of those, the key being x0 and the value being x1. So we can just say add those with a equal sign, but each of these key values are both being quoted by quote plus. Well, we just made that function, so we can run quote plus and quote plus. Heck yeah. And these are all sequenced together by the use of an ampersand. And since this list comprehension is going to give us a list, we can very easily just join these with the simple ampersand. So let's run this. Oh, I forgot a plus sign here. And I forgot an S here. And let's return the function out. And okay, we got directory, age, name, John Hammond, everything that we saw earlier. Is it the exact same as our URL lib version? It is. It's the exact same thing. Really, really simple. All it takes is one line with some nice list comprehension in Python. And it's all based off of one function that we have wrote initially to handle just about everything. And boom, we've created all of the functions, at least the handy utility functions that URL has given us. Really cool, right? So if we save this as myquoter.python, what we can do is we can get hop back into idle, import myquoter, and run all these functions. Essentially creating our own module that works very, very similar to the original URL lib utility functions. Sweet! And we built it ourselves, so we totally understand what all it does and how it happens, right? <laughs> if you guys don't understand any bit about it, please just say the word. I'm happy to help out, kind of explain some things. I hope you guys like this method. I honestly think it's pretty gorgeous, because we're just using one lines uh, to modify an initial uh, general purpose factory function. So, cool. Thanks so much, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It was the last one for the URL lib series. Uh, I hope you guys liked this series. It's a remake of one I've done years ago, but it didn't... It was not the best quality. Uh, I had some pretty weird programming styles, and, and I don't know, I had a bad habit back then. So this new one I hope is better for you guys. We've covered a little bit more. We've done a little bit more, and I hope you guys enjoy it. So thanks again. Hope to see you in the next tutorial.